We just finished our talk on unit vectors, but we still do not know why they are really, truly very important. Well, vector statics is all about forces, and we need ways to combine, sometimes many, forces together to find resultant forces, or use components to find the original force. The reason unit vectors are so important is because they allow us to set up a Cartesian coordinate system, allow us to state which way certain component forces are acting, and most importantly, give us a way to combine forces using an analytical approach as compared to a trigonometric or graphical approach, as we have been doing for the past while. So, what is an analytical solution? Let's say that we had three forces acting on this particle, forces A, B, and C. If we wanted to find the resultant of these three forces, we could use our good old tail-to-tip method and use trigonometry or a graphical solution to solve for the force, or we can use our analytical approach using unit vectors. In order to solve this using an analytical approach, we would need to first set up our coordinate system like this. First, we could break down force A as negative AXI plus AYJ. Next, we could break force B down as BXI plus BYJ. And finally, we could break down force C as CXI minus CYJ. Now, what's neat about splitting forces into rectangular components using the unit vectors is that if you wanted to find the resultant force of forces A, B, and C, you could simply add the similar components together, and that would give you the rectangular components of the resultant force. In other words, if I wanted to add forces A, B, and C to obtain the resultant force, which I will call R, then R would have the components Rx and Ry. Now, if I wanted to find out what, the com what these components were, then I could simply add all the I components to obtain Rx and all the J components to obtain Ry. In other words, Rxi would be equal to the sum of the A, B, and C components acting in the X direction, and R Ryj would be equal to the sum of the A, B, and C components acting in the Y direction. Now, if this doesn't make too much sense right now, don't worry. I think the best way to explain this would be through some examples, which we will get to soon.